Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to do a detailed review of the Kent Ridgeland Hybrid Bike. You may have seen this bike before at your local Walmart for just $98. It's regularly there if you're in the United States anyway. And it's about one of the cheapest adult bikes you can get. First I'm going to go through the detailed specifications, at least as much as I could find. Then we're going to talk about whether it's actually a good bike. And finally, should you actually buy one? So starting off with the specifications, actually it's pretty hard to find the specifications on this bike. On the website there's almost nothing to be found, on walmart.com there's almost nothing to be found there either. Even with the downloadable PDF manual from the Kent website, there's almost no specifications or uh, geometry numbers to be found on this bike. So almost everything I tell you will be just from what I discovered myself owning this Kent Ridgeland bike. So let's start off with the frame. This is almost certainly a high tensile steel frame. It is steel. It's almost certainly a high tensile uh, steel, which if you don't know is basically the heaviest uh, bike material you can have. It is perfectly fine, but it's, it's heavy. And uh, speaking of the weight, this bike does weigh in at 13.6 kilograms, which is almost exactly 30 pounds. For my measurements, the head tube angle is 73 degrees. And because it's a single speed, this bike is equipped with horizontal rear dropouts. Moving on to the geometry of the frame, this bike only comes in one size, which according to my measurements was 54 centimeters, which according to the website should fit anybody over five foot four. However, from my experience, I'm five feet seven inches tall or 170 centimeters. And I would say this bike is almost too big for me. I would say if you're five, six or under, it may be a little bit not perfectly matched to your size. On the other side of things, Zach Gallardo is six feet tall or 182 centimeters, and he says that this is a bit cramped for him. So probably five foot eight to five foot 11 would be the ideal size for this bike. As you might assume, the fork is also high tensile steel. And also as usual, the welds on the fork for some reason don't look quite as nice as the welds on the rest of the frame. I don't know why that is. Moving on to the drivetrain, more or less you have unbranded components here. You have actually some kind of uh, rubber coated cranks, which are 170 millimeters long, turning a 40 tooth front chain ring and an 18 tooth rear chain ring. And that's actually a very low geared bike. So low in fact that it's difficult to reach 35 kilometers an hour. In fact, if you're going 35 kilometers an hour, you're at basically 120 RPM. So this bike will limit you in terms of your top speed, no doubt. And just like pretty much any department store bike, it does come with junk plastic pedals that you'll want to dispose of as soon as possible. Moving on to the braking system, we have general unbranded V-brakes. They should stop the bike. Not much more to say about that. The wheels on this bike are aluminum, single wall, and from what I could measure, 20.8 millimeters wide in the in in interior width. On the wheels, you get some ridiculously colored 38C tires with a very curved and street type profile. Moving on to the seat post in the saddle, again all unbranded and the saddle is relatively comfortable but looking at the quality probably won't last you that long. The brake levers go with the rest of the theme of this bike looking totally ridiculous. However, they are painted which means perhaps you can take that paint off if you really desire to do so. Let's see what kind of metal is underneath that paint. Okay, that's actually a good thing. They are aluminum, so you could actually sand away or brush away all that paint and polish it and it might look slightly better. Of course, with pretty much any bike of this price, this is a quill stem, all steel. You can just tell by the welds. That quill stem is attached to a 620 millimeter wide set of riser bars with a, some slight sweep. They're pretty comfortable. And that gives this bike an overall riding position that's very upright. Okay, so I think that's enough on the technical specifications and geometry of the bike. How does the bike actually ride? How does it feel? Well, when I bought this, I bought it used off Facebook Marketplace from a lady in a lifted pickup truck in a Publix parking lot. When I saw the bike, and I already knew the history of the bike, I assumed this bike is going to be total crap. It's $98 new. I'm buying it for $60 in a parking lot. This isn't gonna be the best riding experience. And that's true, it's not the best riding experience. But I'll bet you it's a lot better than what you would expect. 
be straightforward, actually riding this bike is pretty fun. If you don't expect to go that fast and you just take it for what it is, it's fun because it's single speed, you're not worrying about gears. And it's fun because you're sitting so high up. And it's fun because the gear ratio is such that you can actually accelerate really nicely. Now you're not gonna go that fast, but you can at least get up to that not very fast speed pretty quick. To put it in car terms, it's kind of like driving a 1999 Chevrolet Cavalier base model that was previously a rental car. It's slow, it's awful, but because it's so cheap, and because it's kind of small, it's kind of fun. It's okay. And at the end of the day, I actually enjoy riding this bike. I genuinely enjoy riding this bike. It has kind of a safety feel with these big wide tires and this high up seating position. It's kind of like a, like a mountain bike with no suspension. I don't know how to describe it. So should you buy this bike? I believe this bike was made for two different types of people. First person is somebody who ain't got no money. They got almost no money. They need to buy this in a parking lot used for like 50 bucks and they need to get wherever they need to go. The second type of person is probably new to cycling. They don't want to spend a bunch of money on a hobby that they're not really sure they're going to continue doing for very long. And actually, I think this is a really good bike for that person. It's very confidence inspiring with its upright seating position. You don't have any gears to worry about. It accelerates decently quick. You have normal brake levers that everybody's used to. It really doesn't get any simpler than that. And that's a great thing for somebody getting back into cycling or getting into cycling the first time. The only drawback is they only make it in one size. And if Ken, if you happen to be watching this, why don't you go ahead and make this in a small too, just small, large or small, medium, whatever you want to call it. Something for maybe even just make one more size. Just make one that's a little bit smaller than this for everybody who's like under five foot seven. One thing I feel almost obligated that I should tell you about, and that is from my experience, both the Kent bikes that I've had and even a friend of mine who has this exact same bike, we've all heard some sounds, some clunks from the bottom bracket. So I don't know if that means that it's not gonna last that long or, or that it may just go clunking on for thousands of miles. But I think that might be a weakness in this bike. So if you buy it, okay, you're only spending 98 bucks, so it's not a big deal, but you should know that eventually if you ride it a lot, you may be replacing that bottom bracket. And another thing to know is if you buy this directly from Walmart right off their, off their showroom, <laughs> um, you should really take it to a shop to get professionally assembled. Or if you have the tools and the know-how, do it yourself. Because the bikes that you find on the showroom from Walmart almost always are not gonna be set up right. I bet like 99% of the time, there's something that's not that tight. In fact, on this bike, which I bought used, the previous owner told me that her husband only rode it once or twice. In fact, it even had like some of the original tags on it. And sure enough, the handlebars weren't even tight. After I rode it for my first time, they started rotating. So should you buy it? Well, ultimately the choice is yours. I'm a fan of the bike. In a way, I think this is kind of a classic. It's a simple bike for a low price. So I like it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but I will be keeping it long enough to do some nice upgrades to make it a better bike than it currently is. Stay tuned for those videos. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and like. I do appreciate that very much. And that's about it. Have a great day. Bye. Gallardo. Gallardo. On the other side of things, Zach Gallardo. <laughs> Sorry about that.